Hi guys, welcome back to the shop. Today I'm going to be showing you how to install a traditional style um, casement fastener. This is a monkey tail variant of it, but um, we're installing it on a flush casement window that I've got behind me here. So um, first things first, we're going to want to secure the window um, in position so that uh, it's not going to fall over while we're working on it. Um, next, I usually install the casement stay first. These generally tend to be used in conjunction with a traditional stay. Um, the only sort of time when you probably wouldn't use a stay is if you're using friction hinges on the window. But uh, get your stay fitted first and that will hold the window shut while you're drilling the holes etc to work on your fastener. I've uploaded a video on how to install the casement stay so the link to that should be in the description. Okay, so the first port of call is to secure the opening casement against the rebate in its shut position. So you want to uh, clamp that in place so that it compresses the seals to the point where you want the window to close to. So how much you want them seals to compress when the fastener is shut is how much you want to clamp that window shut now. It's dead easy when the window's on the bench, you can stick a clamp over the top and uh, just clamp the casement shut like so, making sure, like I said, that uh, if you need to, there's a block on the outside to get that uh, casement to go to where you want it to against the seal. If you're not so lucky to have it on the bench um, and you're fitting this to a, a window that's already in existence um, and it's glazed so you can't stick the clamp through the glass, uh, another option is to get a batten any type of batten stick or anything like that that's uh, long enough to bridge the gap between the two jams or the jam and the mullion. And uh, once you've located the position of the uh, stay and the fastener, um, we're going to fit the stay first. Um, you can then mark that position on the actual casement itself, drill a hole in this batten and put a screw through just in the centre of where that plate is of the fastener and the screw will pull the casement in using the batten as sort of a, a counter acting like a stop to work against the screw pulling the casement in and that will hold it against the rebate so you don't need to get to the outside and wedge the casement shut or anything like that you can do that from sort of inside um, with no dramas at all um, you might struggle to get the screw to engage into that casement but you just need to simply open that up pop a pilot hole into the casement pull it shut put your screw through the button and then screw into the sash and then it will pull it in against the seal nicely okay so if you're following the uh, video in the same order as what i'm doing it you'll fit the stay first using the uh, method that i described in the other video um, the links in the description um, then we move on to fitting the fastener so before we start fitting it you just want to check that the fastener is suitable for the window so we've got a mortise plate and a fastener so the mortise plate needs to check that it will fit um, onto the uh, mullion or the jam of the window without sticking out past the face here um, when it's engaged into the um, arm of the fastener here so in that position there where the um, fastener will engage in that mortise plate you need to check that that distance is going to work with what you've got on your window and any mouldings that might be on this surface here um, and you also need to check that there's enough room here on the casement itself before the glass starts for you to get a fixing in. So um, if the glass has gone in from the outside of the window, you're going to have a rebate there. And uh, you don't want to be putting a screw through from the fastener through into that rebate and drilling into the glass because you're going to end up breaking it. So you've got to have enough room um, on the window there to... Um, to fit the fastener. Um, before we get started into where to fit it on that casement we need to work out where we're going to put it in the height. So generally I put it so that the uh, 
the distance between the bottom of the monkey tail or whatever type fastener there to the sill is the same as from the top of that uh, brass fit in there to the head. So the easiest way of doing that is to measure the overall of that opening, which is 670 on this case. Measure the height of the fastener. Um, do that off of here, which is 110 mil. So 670 minus 110, that's 560 mil. So that's 280 mil that we want from the top of the, from the head to the top of the fastener. 280 mil. Now that needs to be the same on both these so that it marries through uh, visually. So we've got our pencil line there for the top of our fastener. Now we want to uh, locate that um, left and right on the piece of timber itself. Now I've already done that on the other side, so I've got to mirror what I've done here. But uh, to work that one out, um, you want to free up the casement itself. Um, and uh, I've got to reach through because I can't because the camera's in the way. You've got to hold this in position, the fastener and then free up the casement so it can move and check that uh, this part here where it protrudes away and the handle attaches doesn't catch this edge of the window here or anything else so you don't want it too tight to the edge of the window here so that when this opens it gets real close to this this um, mullion in the window because by the time you've got your mortise plate on there you're quite likely to catch um, the window and it won't open so especially if you've got a bit uh, in these fasteners a bit of an angle on like that it uh, adds to the problem so um, you want that far enough away that it's going to clear by the time this mortise plate's in place but not too far that it's uh, that it's exerting too much pressure on this uh, this hinge here so the closer it can be to the hinge the better but you want the clearance there for it to open so um, I chose this spot here, so you've got nice about 2-3 mil of clearance and uh, it's, uh, it's perfectly in the range of the, uh, of the fastener working properly. So this is the trickiest bit, again like I said you've got to hold that casement if it's not fixed by a stay, but you've got to hold it with one hand and then drill that pilot hole with the other made even more awkward by the fact there's a camera in the way. <sighs> want a nice fitting screwdriver for the groove. The fit of the screwdriver is important in a width term. Um, and important in across the length of that slot as well, but not as vital as getting it to fit in a in the width of the slot. And we'll screw that one in place. As I mentioned in the um, casement stay video, um, the pilot drill hole size is absolutely vital with any form of traditional brass screw. Um, you want to get the, the core of the screw size, which in this case was about uh, two and a half mil, and, uh, and get a pilot drill that suits that so it clears the core of the screw and just the threads are biting into the timber and it's not exerting too much pressure on that wood to, to sort of force a split in it. Okay, we'll just square that fastener up with the side of the uh, rebate there so it looks nice and uh, nice and in line. You can use the pressure of that screw just to, uh, just to hold it and then we'll drill the other hole. I'm not going to worry too much about aligning the screws um, now as this is all going to be 
removed to paint the window. But uh, if you're doing this uh, for real, you want to get your screws all nicely aligned um, on this fastener in the vertical position. And depending on what timber you've got, um, if you've got a lot of pressure on, you can just have a slight tweak backwards. Um, or you can take the screw out and reinsert it in a slightly different position um, and apply more force as you're screwing it in to get a slightly different end position on the screw. So if it's an oak window, you're not likely to be able to, if it ends up in that position there, you're not going to be able to turn that another half turn or quarter turn like this, like a can in a coir, um, to get that position in line. So you're going to have to sort of work it in and out a little bit, putting more pressure on to try and get a, a different finishing position on the screw. But if you, if you end up working it, um, you will get there eventually, and uh, it will just pull the fibres a little bit to get that extra turn on the screw. Without snapping it. So there we go. This one's, uh, this one's ended up pretty much vertical, so it just wants a tiny little tweak there. There we go. So now we're ready to mark the position of the mortise plate. Now the way in which I do that is um, it, it's easy if you've got a quality fastener with a quality uh, pivot on the hinge there. If that pivot hinge is sort of at an angle so this is loose, um, by the time that fastener is in this position engaging into the wood, um, it's going to have a bevel on it uh, pointing away so you've got to allow for that in this uh, mortise bracket. But uh, what I do is, is put the equivalent pressure on the fastener as it will have when it's uh, in the closed position. So you take the slack out of, uh, out of that pin there, pull it away, and then I mark the back of that uh, fastener pin here where it engages on the timber. You can either do that by just engaging it into the wood and getting like a small dent mark in the wood and then put in a pencil line on that, checking it visually. You can see that on the camera. You just want to get your, your eye in line with the back of this edge here and get a mark on the timber there as to where that's going to be. Um, remember we need to pull this in slight, a slight bit more because it's only held at the bottom by the casement stay. So from that point there is where the bot the fastener will engage in the bottom of this mortise plate. Um, these should have a slight bevel on them um, built into that slot so it should be uh, narrower there on the brass than at the top and it goes this way around. So when that uh, fastener engages in the bottom there it should be fairly easy to engage it with the seal open because you've got the slack of that fastener um, at the furthest point and it's uh, slightly tapered there at the bottom anyway so it should be fairly easy to engage it and then as you engage the fastener into the closed position this wedge shape pulls it in and it gets nearer to the centre of this uh, of this wedge here and um, actually that helps to pull the casement in too. So if we mount now this edge here onto that line we should have a good starting point for the uh, fitting of it. Before we move that out of the way we're just going to have to mark um, the extremes of the travel of this uh, pin here. So we need to mark the underside level where the, the maximum it can go up before it will hit that pin and then open the casement slightly and we'll mark level with the, the top of that pin here where it's going to uh, be in the closed position when that fastener is fully closed that's the position it will be in. I have to apologise at this point because um, I've just realised they've sent me a casement fastener that's been made the wrong way around so the monkey tail actually points towards the, uh, the wedge there so um, I'm going to stop fitting that one because these are all slightly different in size and shape um, and I don't want to fit this one to the window to then buy another one and it be 
half a hole out on all the settings and not uh, not fit correctly. So I'm going to stop fitting that one. Um, I'll deconstruct this one and um, show you how to finish fitting it using this one. Okay, so we're just at the point um, before I realised we've got a problem there, that we'd marked um, the back edge of this fastener here against the um, mullion on the window. So it would be a tick along that cut there, like that. And we'd also marked the top and the bottom points where it engages on that window. So effectively that point there and that point there. So once we've done that, we can open the uh, casement and get it out of the way. And we can bring the mortise plate into that position. So like I was saying, uh, narrower side of the hole at the top. And um, we use them marked positions. So this line here on this back edge and these two to find a, a position on the window where that's going to work. So I'm using that line there in line, that one there. They're my extreme points, so I can go between them two points. And then the back of that cut there was where the line was, is going to align with the bottom of that mortise plate. So as you can see, I've ended up somewhere there. So these two lines marry up and that works with the bottom of that plate. So pilot drill this hole here and uh, pop a screw in. We'll just put enough pressure on that screw for a start to hold it. So that's the bottom one done. I'll just align that plate so it's nice and parallel with the timber on the window. If that plate is square if the hole in that plate is square as a profile and not got a taper, um, you do have the option of tilting the plate to create a slight wedge shape on that uh, oh, slight wedge on that back surface for the fastener to engage against to pull the window seal in. But uh, these are quite good uh, fasteners and um, they've got that wedge shape built in. So. We'll align that with the window so it's nice and parallel. They do look best if they're parallel. And then drill and screw that one as well. I'm not physically going to put the screw in um, now. There's no need. Um, and then we'll draw around the inside of that mortise uh, latch plate um, for this hole here. Then we'll take the screw back out and we'll mortise um, the hole in the jam of the window. The easiest way to do that um, is to use a small drill. Generally I just use the pilot drill that I've been using and drill the four corners and then a uh, a slightly larger drill like a six or a seven mil drill bit and just drill it three or four holes in a series uh, within them lines you've drawn and then just chisel use a sharp chisel and chisel the rest of the, um, the opening out like shown and then if you uh, use a quarter chisel you can just work that in the opening and uh, take that as deep as necessary um, in that uh, cut until you can close the fastener like that without any clearance issues. So um, what you'll find as a clearance issue is the, the end of the fastener will be hitting the bottom of the hole. Um, you just need to chisel it out until that's clear. And uh, you'll have a pencil line on there. You just want to go slightly beyond the pencil line and uh, chisel that away. What you don't want to happen is for some timber to be left on um, on that back edge of the mortise plate so that the latch is working on the timber and not the metal. All that's going to do is uh, split that tiny bit of timber away and damage the window and you'll end up with some nasty looking splits either side of that uh, plate. So make sure it's clear and it's engaging on this uh, 
this plate here, but you want it as parallel as possible. And uh, a nice sharp chisel to get a nice finish on the timber. Once that uh, clearance hole is done and the fastener closes without any issue, we can then screw this back in place. I'm not going to align the screws now. Um, you don't want to align them too many times because every time you're aligning them, you are pulling the threads of the timber ever so slightly. Um, I'll do that on the the final fitting of the fastener. So there we have it, uh, nice and parallel. Um, the fastener should engage um, when you've pulled that seal, just just sort of touch tight against the seal, so the casement's just touching the seal, it should engage at the bottom of that plate, and when you twist it shut, um, it's got a wedge action that will pull it into the seal. Close the stay, that pulls it in so that it's touching. And then if we pull this this fastener so that it takes the slack out of it like that, it should just clear the, the window there. So if I release the pressure off the stay, it will hold it in that position. There, and you can do it without uh, having to pull on the window. And then as you turn it, it pulls it in nice and tight. So if I take the stay off and just use the fastener, we'll have to pull that in with a slight bit of pressure to get to that point, and then it will pull it in with a nice compression against the seal. I know I'm probably gonna get slated for leaving the screws wonky, but uh, I really don't wanna mess them screw holes up too much by straightening them now. Um, like I say, they're going to get taken off and uh, put back on and I'll straighten them up then. So there we have it, a casement fastener and a casement stay on a traditional flush casement window. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, if you've got any questions, leave a comment below. Don't forget to like if you have enjoyed it and it's been helpful and to subscribe if you haven't done it already.